Hey everybody, my name is Old School Nerd, welcome in, and today we have a special request. It is Saturday, and normally I get all my requests from Super Chats uh, from the live stream, but today I just had to do this one. This one just, it really connected with me on a personal level. Andrew Skaggs from Patreon goes, Sabato just dropped a new song, The Royal Guard, bruh, dot, 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 exclamation point, <laughs> Sabaton. Dumbass fucking phone. Okay, so two things. Number one, I do listen to my Patreon uh, subscribers 100%. The other thing is, apparently I'm not the only one in this channel that makes mistakes. By the way, uh, my name is Old School Nerd. Welcome into the channel. Check us out on OldSchoolNerd.com. It's got all of the, uh, the social media posts, the Patreon, where Andrew apparently dropped that request, and the merchandise store where the new t-shirt we have is 100% real. Real reactions, Real mistakes, just like Andrew's. The yeah, I said grade that in? It, it meant something to me. Now, so Sabaton released an English word version of the song Life, uh, Lives Guard, uh, Lives Garden, which is the Swedish word for lifeguard. Now, okay, before you guys flood the comments of gifts with David Hasselhoff running down a beach in a Speedo, no, not lifeguard like Baywatch. <laughs> lifeguard is the name of the Royal Guard of Sweden going all the way back to early 1500s. I think this year is actually the 500 year anniversary. So it would be 1521 when they were formed. And they're one of the oldest active standing military units in the world right now. <clears throat> Most units they get disbanded, decommissioned, brought back, you know, whatever, but the lifeguards have stayed on. Now, I, I think the reason why the song is called The Royal Guard is because if Sabaton made a song called Lifeguard, come on, you're just, you're gonna think of, you know, saving people in the water. That's not what this is about. <clears throat> in fact, the history of the Swedish lifeguards is an illustrious and honorable one. Um, they are literally like in the United States mythos, the Green Berets, Navy SEALs in Sweden, the lifeguards. It is literally to that level. <clears throat> Overwhelming odds, overcoming stuff, and that is the case. In fact, the modern iteration of the lifeguards in Sweden now are not only just the protection of the royal family and security, but they're also the counterterrorism, counterintelligence, all the stuff we would expect from special ops in the United States, that's what they're charged with now. So they're still very active, they're still very badass, but this is Sabaton kind of going to bat for the, for the home team here, you know? Just like Five Finger Death Punch does a lot of honor and support to the United States military, this is Sabaton doing their part for their home guys. So there you go. Um, it's gonna be interesting to see how this plays out. I'm excited. <clears throat> I know I know a little bit about the lifeguards. I've heard of them, and when you hear the alert, when you hear the name lifeguard, it kind of sticks with you in college. And I, I was taking a history class, and it was a military history class. And one of the essays we wrote was about a certain thing, with, and the Swedish lifeguards were put into it. So let's let's see how it works. Okay, the, my name is Old School Nerd. Thank you for coming in. We're gonna get past all this. Let's get to some sabotage. I talk enough. Come on, guys, let's go. Okay, the uniforms that Sabaton is wearing is gonna date the military unit a little bit. But when you're dealing with a military unit that goes all the way back to 1500s, it, it, their uniforms are gonna change with the modern regalia. This, is, this will be very obvious to a lot of uh, Europeans and of course uh, North Americans, whether you're from Canada or the United States um, and into Europe uh, throughout, around 1700. <clears throat> of course, I'm sure a lot of Americans that are watching this are going, why are they dressed up like George Washington? <laughs> okay. 
we dress up like them. <laughs> Let's just get that straight, okay? All of our stylings for military uniforms came from the UK. The UK, similar to most European countries, were doing this um, this long coat, uh, breech, breecher boots with the long coat with the high cuff because it wasn't just ceremonial. You would fold down the cuff for, for winter, uh, winter winds. And of course, the tricorn hat, which so many Americans are going to think of George Washington when they see a tricorn hat. True, but also in the Swedish tradition, this was the uniform the, the lifeguards wore in the 1700s. Uh, interesting enough, um, the reason why um, this should immediately step away from the American thought of it, uh, it's yellow and blue. Swedish flag is yellow, yellow cross on a, on a navy blue background. Sweden, got it. Okay. Continue. Ominous music. Okay, whoa. So this would probably be the Great Northern War. You're dealing with the 1700s. Um, early 1700s would be the Great Northern War. Late 1700s would be the Swedo Russian War. Either way, you'd be dealing with. Uh, the czar's troops, Russian czar, and this wrap on the head is typical of the light cassock cav cavalry. Um, they carried sabers, small arms. Um, based upon the age of the way it's looking like, this could very well be maybe the battle. Uh, if you're gonna write a, if you're if you're gonna write a song about the the amazement of the Swedish lifeguards, this would be the Battle of Narva. Um, I have heard of the Battle of Narva. It's a classic military tale. It's not well known when you're comparing it to the Battle of Thermopylae with the 300 Spartans version of the Persian Empire or the Battle of the Bulge where the 101st Airborne is surrounded by the like four panzer divisions in World War II. But for Sweden, the Battle of Narva is their Battle of the Bulge. It is their Battle of Thermopylae. It's one of the most famous battles in Swedish history. Uh, right at the beginning of the Great Northern War, Russia has, uh, it's a Russian force, the Battle of Narva, 30 plus thousand, maybe 1, 1,500, 2,000 Swedish lifeguard troops, and they held them off. They held them off until Swedish reinforcements could come and win the battle. It was one of the most crushing defeats that Russia faced until the Napoleonic Wars, the beginning of the Napoleonic Wars, and then the next time the Russians were struggled against so harshly by an enemy would be the, the Germans in World War II, and of course the Finns in, the, in, in World War II as well. Uh, but for Swedish people, this is their Battle of the Bulge. This is their um, Battle of Thermopylae. Small group dedicated against overwhelming odds, and they make it through, so let's check it out. I'm going to let it play. Sorry. Um, <laughs> this is the throne room in Stockholm, apparently, but the Battle of Narva did not pl take place in Stockholm. So I don't remember ever a Russian army invading Stockholm. I I've never heard of that, but the imagery of they are defending the throne. There's no king or queen on the throne. It's just the crown. So it's their, their, the imagery is they're defending Sweden. Does that make sense? Like the imagery of the throne room, the Swedish flags, the throne with the crown on it. Instead of it saying we're defending the actual Stockholm palace, they're defending Sweden as an image. Does that make sense? Okay. Trace their roots from Close. 
Um, very rarely will Sabaton make a historical error in telling a story. This may be the first time I've ever seen one. If you look at the rifles, the muskets they're firing, they're percussion cap, where it's a percussion powder cap that goes over a nipple and the hammer hits it. If this is the Battle of Narva or representing of the Great Northern War in the early 1700s, there were no percussion caps. It was flintlock. You had flint, do a flash pan, and move on. Um, if this is a representation of the Swedish-Russian War at the end of the 1700s, it would still pretty much be footlock percussion cap. Uh, it wouldn't be percussion cap. Now, what are the odds of them actually having flintlock weapons for a music video? Not very high. So you can't really give them shit about it. I mean, you know, they're not actually wearing uniforms from the 1700s. But when you're recreating a video like this, I mean, they never really fought in the throne room. So there's a lot of things about it that are just a music video. But the story they're telling is still very, very accurate. Um, if I wanted to nitpick, I could say, well, they never really fought in the, in the, in the throne room. And um, those aren't actually uh, uniforms from the 1700s. And the Battle of Narva was nowhere near Stockholm. So I don't know. what, it, And they wouldn't be using percussion. Ca Come on, guys. It's a music video. I know it's a sabotage music video. But it's still music. Oh, get all pissed off, Yoakum. I do like how they're actually using a, a musketeer's haversack on their uniform. They actually are wearing, it, here's where you would keep the mini balls, your powder, your wadding, yeah, to, to reload your weapon. And his flap is open because he was just reloading and firing. I've seen a lot of recreations where they do a music video and they don't have their, their, their musket haversack, but on this one they do, it's, it's the little things. Um, they put the Cossacks carrying sabers, light cavalry sabers, which is what they would be using in, in, SARS, in the Tsar's forces. And these guys are using standard infantry sabers, which is what the Swedish lifeguards were using. I'm totally digging it. I know some people are going to be like, because they, they're, not, they're not students of history. Um, I'm a student of history. I'm not a master of history. Let's get that right. Uh, they're going to look at this and go, I don't understand why it looks like they're fighting Muslim people. That's, that's not what that is, guys. <laughs> this is, uh, if you go back and look at the, uh, the artwork 
and the historical paintings that were done of the Swedish Russian wars. The, the Tsar's troops in the early 1700s, this is what they wore. Very lightweight clothing. Um, it was, that's, they were light cavalrymen. The, the Ural Mountains, where the, the Cossack uh, cavalrymen came, they were the shock troops of the Tsar. And so this, is, this was their military garb that they wore at the time. It changed towards the later half of, 17, of the 1700s, which is why I'm thinking this is probably kind of a callback to the Battle of Narva, because the Battle of Narva was in 1700 itself. And so the Tsar's troops in the early 1700s would be dressed like this. Later on, towards the end of the 1700s, when the Swedish-Russian War occurred, the Russian soldiers would be dressed more modern in style. So I'm thinking Battle of Narva. Hopefully I'm right. If I'm wrong, I'm sure I'll hear about it from the Swedes. I'll definitely hear about it from the Finns because they were like, dude, wasn't the Battle of Narva fought in Finland? Probably. It's, it's so weird. Sweden and Russia, they fight, but they go fuck up Finland to do it. <laughs> the Finns are like, what the hell? Why can't you get... Use a boat, which, which is funny because in the Great Northern War, the Swedish, Sweden versus Russia was fought mostly in Finland, and the Finns were like, dude... Next time you guys want to tangle, use a boat. In the Sweden-Russian War in the late 1700s, they did. They used ships to move back and forth. <laughs> Just sorry. I, you got to feel sorry for the Finns, man. They're like, why, why are we stuck between you guys? I mean, seriously. Why are you guys coming to our backyard and fight? Why? And the Russians are like, we, we kill Sweden. And Sweden's like, we kill Russians. Finnish people are like, motherfuckers, we're going to kill you both. Okay, that's freaking cool. Okay, yeah, 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 okay. So I don't think it's any representation of any specific battle. I, I do think they're doing kind of a callback to the Battle of Narva because of the overwhelming odds, that symbolism. But it looks as though they're, they're willing to fight. They're, they're defending this palace slash throne room slash as an image of Sweden. You know, we're a small group of men We'll fight to the last man to defend against overwhelming odds. Da 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 da. The uniforms of both the 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 Tsar Cossack uh, light cavalry and of course the lifeguards themselves normally kind of leans towards the Battle of Narva when you're thinking about overwhelming odds, that kind of thing. Here's a little fun fact. You know how in the United States, and this is for all my friends here in the United States. Um, you know how when we were kids for Halloween, when we would dress up in costumes. Sometimes we dress up as G.I. Joe. We dress up as little army man, right? In Sweden, little kids sometimes will wear lifeguard uniforms. No, not a Speedo. You dicks. Literally, that you can buy like children's sizes of these. That, that's how popular. It, it's their folklore. The Swedish lifeguarden is our G.I. Joe. It's our John Wayne. Right? I mean, that for, for Sweden, they're the shit. Ah, here we go. When you think about, um, when you think about the Swedish guard, I mean, not the one smiling, not, not Joachim, that's ridiculous. More like the bass player, right? Well, he, well, damn it, he's always smiling too. When he's playing bass on stage, he's always smiling. But okay, so if, if you were to, um, if you were to, you know, take 
a yokum, right? Yokum, right? And make him stop smiling. Um, put his glasses back on. Put his battle gear on. Have him as a Swedish lifeguard. Him fight and kill, you know, thousands of guys solo. He would be the Swedish Chuck Norris. You get it now? Now you get the symbolism. There you go. The Swedish lifeguards. One of the oldest still active military units celebrating their 500th anniversary in 2021. As an American, you didn't fight for us, but thank you for your service. My name is Old School Nerd. We'll see you later. The freaking Swedes, man. Ah, Nobel Prizes, bikini teams, lifeguards, sabotage. <laughs> One of these things is not like the others.